Hi everyone, it's Matt Barnes here. And in this video, I wanna talk about the topic, when can I trade? So a lot of people come to trading and they're keen to get started, but they're not sure when they're actually going to do it because they work full time when they're starting out. The good news that I've got for you is that there are financial markets trading anytime from Monday morning through to Saturday morning, Sydney time. So all through that week in a constant 24 hour loop, there are markets open somewhere in the world that you can trade, which means that you can find a market that suits your hours. Even if you've only got half an hour that you can find a little small window to take a trade, you'll be able to find a market that you can jump in and trade. During this presentation, I'm going to be giving you opening and closing times for a range of markets, and they're all going to be listed in Australian Eastern Daylight Time, or AEDT, as of the time I'm recording this in November of 2018. So let's start by looking at the currency markets. The currencies are a 24 hour market, which means you can trade them any time of the day. They open up Monday morning and they close Saturday morning. Remember that's Australian Eastern Daylight Time or Sydney time, just for simplicity. Now there are different ways to measure the trading day. The 24 hour market means that currencies don't actually close. Uh, they're open for the full week, but to do our analysis, we need to be able to identify individual trading days so that we can do our analysis on those charts. So there are different ways to break down when the trading day starts and when the trading day finishes. A very common way of breaking that down is by using the timestamp of one hour after the US stock markets close. So at the moment, that's 9 a.m. The US stock markets close at 8 a.m. Sydney time at the moment. But remember, that's daylight savings time. When daylight savings changes, that time is gonna go backwards to 8 a.m. and then eventually 7 a.m. as the United States and Australia both go on and come off daylight savings time. So it's important, I'm gonna give you a website shortly where you can check these times so you can know exactly when the markets open and close. But this is one way of tracking the open and close of the currency markets. Just remember though, the currency markets don't actually close. It's just a timestamp that appears on your bar chart or on your uh, trading chart so that you can do your analysis. If you're trading currencies, it's a 24 hour market and you place your orders as soon as possible after the new trading day begins. So if I'm in Sydney, the new trading day begins at 9 a.m. If I'm looking at a trading setup, you need to place orders as soon as possible after the new trading day begins if you want to trade on an end of day basis. So I'm based in Sydney. When I get the data, when it comes in just after nine o'clock, I want to get my order in fairly quickly. Now, if you're somebody who works from nine to five, for example, uh, you may like to take a few minutes at the start of your shift if you've, if you've got a kind boss and they might let you place the order there, or you might have to wait until a morning tea break at say 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning, or even lunchtime a little bit later. The good news for us in Australia is that the morning time here or the morning session often, not always, but often is the quietest of the sessions. And you'll normally see a market not move too much in those first few hours. So you've got a little bit of leeway with currencies to jump in there and get your orders in. You don't have to be sitting there waiting for the opening bell. Uh, you do have a little bit of a window there. Now, if you're interested in trading currencies, check out our FX trading series on this channel. It's a seven part series that will take you through all of the mechanics of taking an FX trade. Now, if currencies aren't for you, the good news is there are lots and lots of stock markets that you can choose from. If you're living in Australia like I am, uh, of course you can trade Australian stocks, but you can trade many other stocks as well. And I'm gonna go through those now. If you're trading Australian stocks, the Australian Stock Exchange opens at 10 a.m. Sydney time and closes at 4 p.m. Sydney time. So that you've got a six hour window during the day for you to execute your trades. Now you can do your analysis on the markets at any time, but if you want to actually place orders, they have to be placed between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. in that tight window there. Now, if you're really busy during the working day and you can't get in front of a computer or you can't contact your broker or open up your trading platform between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., you're probably not going to be able to trade Australian stocks at this time. So you might have to put those on the back burner and come back to them later and look for another market in the meantime. If you want to trade stocks, but you can't trade during this time, you're gonna to need to find another exchange and trade stocks in another country. The good news is that's very easy to do. We're gonna take a look now at a website called stockmarketclock.com. So you can see the link there, www.stockmarketclock.com forward slash exchanges. And that takes you to this page here, 
which shows you all of the different exchanges throughout the world and gives you all of the important information that you're going to need to know to trade them. So if we look at the first item on the top of the list there, New York Stock Exchange, you can see the symbol is the NYSE. It has a market capitalization of $24.22 trillion. So as you can see, it's easily the largest stock exchange out there. You can see at the time that I'm recording this, the status of that market is that it is closed and the countdown clock next to that says 13 hours and 19 minutes. So those two columns there, uh, if, the, if the status of the market is open, that countdown clock is going to give you a countdown until the market closes. Now that might be the close of the trading day or it might be the close of the morning session. Some of the Asian stock exchanges actually have a lunch break halfway through the trading day. So just be aware of that. On the right hand column there, you can see hours and holidays. If you click on hours, it will tell you the exact hours during the day that the market is opened. So with that in mind, let's have a look at some of the global stock markets from the point of view of someone living in Sydney, Australia. Now, if you're not living in Sydney, Australia, you'll need to go through and check these times against your local time. But all of the times that you see here are in Australian Eastern Daylight Time. So we already know that Sydney trades from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. If you can't make Sydney, um, perhaps you might be interested in trading Tokyo, which starts an hour later and finishes an hour later, trading from 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. Or you've got Singapore, which trades from 12 p.m. through to 8 p.m. So again, if perhaps the mornings are too busy for you, you might be interested in coming on board and trading uh, some stocks in Singapore around the middle of the day or trading in the evenings, trading the close of the market as we head into 8 p.m. Hong Kong has similar hours, but you can see it starts a little bit later at 12.30 p.m. and it finishes a little bit earlier, closing the day at 7 p.m. Shanghai, very similar again starting at 12.30 p.m. but closing at 6 p.m. Now it's interesting to look at these times because you can see they have different opens and different closes. If you just want to be an end of day trader, taking trades based on end of day data or end of day information, which is a great place to start out as a beginner by the way, you're going to be more interested in the open of the market. So you want to be able to be in front of a screen when the market is opening and when it's starting up for the day. In the Active Trader program, Safety in the Market students would be aware that there are certain methods that we can employ around the close of the market. So for those methods, we would need to be watching the close of the market. So you might be looking at this and saying, well, I'd have to take Singapore because I don't get home from work until seven o'clock, for example. So I'd have to trade the Singapore market so that I could be in front of the computer and ready to trade at 8 p.m. But you might also be thinking, well, I get home at five o'clock, I'm gonna to have to trade Shanghai because I've got a yoga class at seven o'clock or maybe meeting my friends at the pub at seven o'clock. So you have to think about the open and think about the close and then think about what kind of trader you want to be. If in doubt, I would say, watch the open of the market. That would be the best place to place your orders. But pay attention to the open and the close. Think about what kind of trader you want to be and the strategies that you're going to be employing there. Moving on, we can see in India, the stock exchange opens at 2.45 p.m. So a little bit later in the afternoon there and it runs through till 9 p.m. So again, the latest of the closes so far. Then you've got London opening up at 7 p.m. and running all the way through till 3.30 a.m. in the morning. And for a lot of our Australian students, this is a market that you might want to have a look at. There's plenty of volume and liquidity in there and it opens at a, a reasonably early time of 7 p.m. It's after the, the normal work day of nine till five, but it's not too late at night. And sure, it might be in the middle of dinner time. So you just have to make sure that uh, you have all of your orders ready to go. Uh, you can open your platform, place your orders and then move on to something else. Uh, but that's a very convenient time for a lot of our Australian traders. Moving on from there, you've got the New York market. So the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, for example, opening up at 1.30 a.m. in the morning. Now, during our summer time here in Australia, uh, the markets open at 1.30 a.m. During the winter time, they open at 11.30 p.m. the previous night. Depending on whether you're an early bird or not, some of you would prefer to stay up late till 11.30. Others would prefer to just go to bed early and then set the alarm and get up at 1.30 a.m. and place the trade and then go back to bed. Um, while still others will just be interested in the close of the day and they're happy to look at the market at six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning uh, and make any trading decisions then. 
But as you can see there, there's a wide variety of markets. And for our friends in New Zealand, I haven't forgotten you, the New Zealand market trades from 8 a.m. in the morning through to 3 p.m. in the afternoon, Sydney time. Again, these are all Australian Eastern Daylight times. So you can see from the whole list there that whatever time you want to come to the markets, whether it's from an open perspective or from the perspective of watching the close, there is going to be a stock market available for you to trade. So you can get in there. Uh, if you can't trade Sydney, try trading some of the Asian markets. If they don't work for you, consider uh, looking at India or London or New York or even New Zealand. But whatever you want to trade, there will be a stock market open when you're ready to trade it. So I think that's really good news for, for new traders. A lot of people think, gee, I'd love to get into trading, but when am I going to do it? Well, now you've got time. You can take that time away uh, from watching TV or Netflix, or you can put a couple of hours in, do your analysis, put your trades on, and get your trading career up and running. That just leaves us with the commodity markets. There's a lot of different commodities that you can trade. Uh, most of the, the biggest ones trade during the US stock market hours. So if you want to trade, obviously you're gonna be looking a little bit later at night. The good news is that these days, there is an electronic session that runs as well for most of the trading day. So you don't have to get up in the early hours of the morning, but just be aware of what you're trading. Have a look at the volume of what you're trading and make sure that there is sufficient volume throughout the trading day. I know a lot of commodities traders who prefer to do their trading during the US stock market hours when there's a lot more volume and liquidity in those markets. So depending on what you're trading, just be aware of the volume there. If you want to find out what time your particular commodity trades, maybe you want to trade crude oil, maybe you want to trade gold or silver or coffee or cotton or sugar or wheat or corn or any number of commodities, you have to find the website that that commodity uh, trades on. So you find the exchange or the commodities exchange that that commodity trades on. You go to their website and for example, www.cmegroup.com, that's the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. And when you're on the website, you look for something called the contract specifications for the commodity that you wish to trade. So here's an example of trading coffee futures. You can see coffee futures uh, trade in a contract unit of 37,500 pounds. The price quotation is in US dollars and cents per pound, but the third row down trading hours is the one we're interested in. Sunday to Friday, 6 p.m. through to 5 p.m. the next day. So basically, uh, coffee is a 23 hour market with a one hour break uh, commencing at 5 p.m., which is 4 p.m. Chicago time, as you can see on the screen there. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button below the video and give us a like. And if you haven't already done so, uh, please subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our future trading related videos. If you'd like to learn more about trading commodities or trading stocks, check out our Active Trader Program video, which you'll also find on this channel. If you have any questions, please also feel free to email them to info at safetyinthemarket.com.au. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.